<laughs> well, I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. People know me. I'm very important. Uh, I have many leather-bound books, and my apartment smells like the nice guys on business. Need an education on how to grow your business? The nice guys are here to help. Learn about great customer service, networking, and how just being nice can help you prosper. Now, here are your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. Hey, Nice Guy community. Welcome back. Welcome back. That's right. It is the week after our Mastermind, and we actually have a couple of episodes coming up this week that were recorded at the Mastermind, but today is all about Mr. Bob Jones. Uh, my name is Strickland Bonner. On the other side of the microphone, Mr. Doug Sandler. How are you today, Doug? I am. I'm doing great. That was what a great what a great week that was at the uh, at the mastermind session. We had we chock full of information, a couple of tears shed mm-hmm. <laughs> along the way. But Speak all in yourself. all, I know, I know. I, mean, I get very emotional at these things, and it wasn't because <laughs> anybody hurt my feelings. It was just because it was it was such an emotional time pulling everybody together and lots of great learning and you just just like a can opener just opened up a a whole well of feelings for me you know when we talk you and i just just discussing on the podcast you know you're at your house your studio i'm at my i'm at my house my studio and uh you know there's not a lot of interaction and it isn't only until you get in front of people and you start to really see their passion that they have with their message i mean uh, Laura Cannon and Rob Jollis and and uh, Sean Carpenter, Casey Cornelius. I mean, those guys, uh, top notch speakers, just uh, just completely blew me away with their knowledge and their and their passion for what they do. So yeah, w- w- great time last week. That was pretty amazing. And actually, the episode tomorrow was one that we actually recorded last week. So like, if there are references to the wrong week, just ignore that. But the Wednesday and Thursday episodes, we've got Casey and Sean on, and it's really interesting. We go over some of the things we talked about in the Mastermind, and it's really, really good stuff. But today is all about Mr. Bob Jones. But do we want to get to the promise statement first? Yeah, go ahead. Just want you, you actually just have go. in front of you. No, you go <laughs> no. go ahead means you do not have it in front of you. Our promise statement is to provide a learning experience that is entertaining and adds value to your life. Period. End of conversation. That's it. You know, uh, let me talk about Bob for a second because I met Bob uh, through Facebook, and I I was watching a couple of I don't know how we connected originally, but I think probably through some of the podcasters that we have uh, in common or some people in this industry. And um, Bob's just one of those guys that he puts out a lot of Facebook Live videos, and I don't know if you noticed this, but on your Facebook feed, don't you get notified when anybody that's in your feed uh, runs a live message or yeah, uh, puts some so. Right. I kept getting these messages over and over again. Bob Jones, he's live on Facebook. So I'm like, all right, who's this Bob Jones guy and what's he all about? And as I was watching him, I'm like, this guy's like the real deal. I mean, total, total like open, free spirit, just uh, what's it called when you just kind of um, – when you the words that you use are the words that are in your head at that particular moment. Is it a stream of uh, – Stream of consciousness. Of, yeah, stream of consciousness, and and he just just completely um, just captivated me with his message and his desire to just speak the truth, uh, being an authentic self, and that's really what Bob talks about is how to be um, an authentic self, especially on social media. You know, he calls uh, uh, you know don't chase the numbers, fo- focus on the uh, quality of your engagement, and the rest is just basically all vanity bullshit. And and he kind of breaks down that barrier of. Let's just see what it's like to be a real person. So if you don't yet follow Bob Jones, uh, listen to the pod, yeah, listen to this episode and you'll hear a lot about him. And, and uh, you tapped into his, uh, his website a little bit too, didn't you, Strick? I did. You know, he, he calls himself a digital marketer, but also I'm curious what time he does Facebook Live because, you know, he's in Australia, which is about 14 hours ahead of us. Yeah, tr- trying to uh, trying to actually nail him down to a time that we could actually record the podcast because of the time difference was a little challenging. I think it was like nine p.m. here. Isn't that is nine p.m. here? I don't know. It's either nine a.m. there or it's yeah. It depends on what time yeah, so- we're in, but like you know, Australia can be anywhere from eleven to fourteen hours ahead of us, basically. Good, good time, good conversation. Definitely a great guy, funny guy, uh, very, very authentic, genuine. Just what you're hearing with Bob is the uh, is the true self of, uh, of of his true self. I mean, I think that we even have a couple of little experience uh, experiences with his daughter. Um, I guess in the background, he might be at a playground or something like that. So, <laughs> very fun, very great interview, and uh, and I, I know you guys will enjoy it. No, definitely all about digital marketing and really how to how to attract a client as opposed to selling clients. And, you know, we get into it. Well, you get into it in the interview. So let's not yap on about it anymore. Why don't we get to uh, the interview with Mr. Bob Jones? 
an expert in the world of digital marketing, but today's guest, Bob Jones, is not here to share his digital expertise, actually, uh, all the way across the world. I met Bob through his antics on Facebook, where you can regularly see him being really just a regular guy, telling really bad jokes, commenting on Americans, uh, that all the politics that we have over here and the reality <laughs> of making money uh, online today as well. Let's spend some time chatting with, uh, with Bob Jones. Welcome to the uh, Nice Guys on Business podcast, Bob. Thanks for having me, Doug. Thanks for having me. And uh, I think the bad jokes, the whole politics thing, I'm not even going to go there at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you, you do them so well, though. You really do. <laughs> what I found really interesting about you, Bob, and we originally met, I think, through uh, Facebook and, and just through social media, is that um, you have a really great following. But what's more important is you have a very engaged network. I noticed that you get a bunch of comments mm. on everything yep. that you do. So how important is that in your world uh, whether it's through work or play or personal or whatever, and help me emphasize what others can get out of a uh, engaged network as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, the engagement levels always seem to peak at, at specific posts and specific thoughts that I put out there. Uh, I've never been one to actually chase the numbers. I don't care if I've got 100,000, a million, or whatever it is. I want to have people engage. That's the whole part of social for me. Uh, so I'd rather have 10 people following me and five people you know, actively commenting and then sharing their thoughts and opinions with me and uh, yeah, giving me feedback um, on what I think is important because that's for me personally the only way a person can grow. The, the rest of it is all vanity bullshit. Oh, sorry, is that going to be beeped yeah, out? No, that won't be beeped out. <laughs> Shit, no. <laughs> I'll, good, I'll good. help you with that. We'll keep the explicit rating right there. That'll be fine. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah, for me, that's you know, that's the whole part of social media. Uh, the media is basically the technology that connects the people. The social is the people. And, and that's the interaction. Every transaction is between, you know, two human beings. Uh, and a lot of people seem to be getting that wrong. Everybody wants to have more followers. Everybody wants to have bigger numbers. And, you know, I can see the opportunities there where, uh, you know, you're going to get sponsorships and you're going to be invited for big gigs and stuff where you can do reporting. Uh, and that's cool. You know, that's the goal as well. But for me, it doesn't work that way. So how so. so how is it though? All right, so let's take it to the next level though. So you have a you have a big following, but you don't need that in order to you know. I, I heard it somebody else a podcasting a friend of mine, Jessica Rhodes, talking about uh, she had a hundred engaged listeners, and out of uh, the first five minutes of a uh, of a podcast, that one of the guests on the show made uh, like five hundred bucks, and that's from a mm -hmm. hundred listeners listening to the show. So more fuel to the fire that you don't have to have a huge listener base. To, uh, Absolutely. to make any money. But what the reality of it is, though, that something's got to grease that wheel, and, and that, unfortunately, is capital. Whether you're in you know, Australia, the UK, Africa, or America, money mm -hmm. is what, you know, what, what really does grease the wheel. So how do you convert just somebody that might be you know, semi-casual acquaintance into somebody that you know, is going to be buying stuff from you? Because isn't that the result? You want people to buy stuff. Uh, that depends. Uh, my goals on social are probably different than most people. Um, I'm in a fortunate enough position where I just sold my my, uh, my digital agency recently. Um, I've got some money in the bank, and I'm sort of looking for my next big thing. Which means this isn't my this isn't my only gig. Um, I can understand that. Yes, if you do want to capitalize on things, that your you know the ad buyers and, and the media buyers they're going to be looking at. Okay, how many followers? What's the cloud of this guy or this girl? Um, and in that case, yeah, you do want to have big numbers, but that's what I said before. Like, it's it's not my specific goal at this stage. I would much rather really have engaging conversation with people because uh, one thing leads to another, and I think um, you, you're going to hit that tipping point anyway. So the numbers will follow if you haven't engaged enough audience. If that makes sense. Do you feel like the pressure is off because you had a payday, or do you feel like? The pressure is on because it's like, I, you know, I, I have a couple of bucks sitting in the bank and, I, and I'm willing to. Sometimes it's confidence that, that makes the man and sometimes it is just know-how that makes the man. So it, what, <laughs> what is it in your particular case? If you didn't have that payday, would you feel quite at the same way? I think that's that's a good question. It's um, at the moment I can only obviously judge one of those situations because it's the one I'm in. Um, I don't think that I would be much different. I would probably you know, pursue a different sort of venture uh, if I didn't have this money in the bank. Not sure if it would be something that I would be doing on social media though. So yeah, I don't have any pressure at the moment, which helps me, uh, I suppose, be more authentic because I do realize that a lot of people once they start trying to make this career that 
you know, authenticity quite often goes out the window because they're trying to cater to the actual audience they're trying to uh, to get in front of. So, yeah, different situation, apples and pears, I suppose. But what do you think about it? Well, I, I guess I look at it and I say, well, uh, geez, it would be great if I didn't have to worry that I had a mortgage payment and that I didn't have mm-hmm. uh, an alimony payment or if I didn't have child care or if I didn't have uh, insurance. Yep. I mean, for some reason, and it, it's I guess it's that worry, that anxiety or that stress that's behind me. I tend to find that I make decisions, and maybe this is wrong, maybe I should act like I don't have these worries because maybe my decisions would be different. But oftentimes I make decisions based upon the fact that if I don't make enough cash in the course of the month, I won't be able to pay my bills, which is going to cause me a lot more stress in my life Mm. than if I was able to. So. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like it's very challenging for me because I I don't I'm not I'm not in a payday situation right now. I think that is one of the things I used to go by. I would I would literally just jump into the deep end and hope you know for God that I could swim or float at least. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and see what happened because I knew I had to actually get something done to to get the result. I think now where I don't have that pressure, I can actually just really do what I enjoy doing and be me, versus having to put up you know, a face or a facade or, or, or persona to try to get that payday. Okay, so but, money is beco- okay, money has become a second. secondary. So, yeah. h- so help me for a second, though. Help me get, I want to put you in a position where the Nice Guy community, the listeners to my podcast, they, mm-hmm. it, what you're saying is relatable to them because they may yep. look at you and say, Hey, you know what, Bob? Fuck you. <laughs> you know, you're, we, we. I get that a lot. Don't I, I worry. Completely, I'm gonna, and I'm not saying that in a, in a derogatory way, but I'm saying I, that I'm trying to yeah. look at it and say, if I'm a listener and listening to you and saying, well, what? I want to know the other part of the problem. I want to know the problem where, and mm. and you talk about this in some of your videos, and this is why I I think I was attracted to to having you on the show to begin with because mm-hmm. you learned a lot of lessons from the bottom of that pile. During that, yeah. during failure moments, I mean, talk yes. for a moment about some of those, fa- or maybe one of those, or I don't know, one specific. Talk about sure. failure and what, how that has kind of shaped where you, where you got to be successful. Okay, so failure is is for me, it's a natural occurrence in any anything that you do. Um, you know, a lot of people seem to be embarrassed, or I think it's society itself that you know you have to be a winner, you can't be a loser. Um, especially in business, that seems to be sort of the the big underlying tone. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of people forget that you know, you ha- in, in order to succeed once, you got to probably fail ninety nine times because every single time you fail, you're going to discover a new gold nugget that will help you to succeed later down the track. I- I've failed a lot. I've I've done things like I said, I just jump into the deep end and I have no idea. Like when I started a business, I had no idea about a business. To give you some background, I got kicked out of four high schools, sorry, three high schools, and I, I finished my fourth one in six years. Now we're talking. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I've done a lot of that stuff. Um, I've always had an issue with authority, which means I've probably had about 200, 300 different jobs over my lifetime. Um, and I started figuring out, hey, you know what? I'm an entrepreneur. I want to do my own thing. I want to start building something, and I want to fill for myself and then succeed for myself. So um the the tricky part there is you how do i put this in order to actually chase that payday a lot of people go into it with the wrong motivation they want to have the big pot of gold at the end of the rainbow sort of thing um it's more the journey as corny as this sound it's the journey of self-discovery and figuring out what you're really really good at it really really what you suck at to in order to become you know your own person and that will actually shine through in your business uh, at the later stage i think that's what happened for me anyway. So do you find, um, and I'm not saying this in, in terms of any, I don't wish this upon you at all, but do you see yourself losing what you have and failing again? Yes. Until the day I, <laughs> until, until the, until the day I die. Absolutely. Right, right, right. So that's, it's really interesting. It's like, so you're not going to be more careful now. You're just going to, okay, because you, have you been where you are right now before? Yeah, every time I fail, I fail on a on a on a grander scale, so to speak. So, um, for me, it's like, like people seem to measure things in lifetimes, right? But if you don't go back and figure out, if you look at the cosmos and the universe and the galaxy and all that stuff in the in the thirteen or fourteen billion years that, that life has been existing, we're just a speck of dust on a speck of dust. Yeah. And if you put everything into perspective, if you make that your reference point. You know, you're not going to stop when you're 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 because 
what's the point that, you know, a lot of people in this day and age, they're born, they go to school, they go to university, they pick a career, they work for, for 30 or 40 or 50 years maybe, they retire and they die. And it's basically just putting themselves through the paces of life as society prescribes it. Um, I would much rather do things my own way, which means whatever time I have here on earth, I would much rather try and feel and feel and win and feel and feel and win. Yeah, that's, <laughs> if that yeah, makes that's, sense. Yeah, that's totally great. And, I mean, you know, and I'm, I'm just thinking about some situations that have occurred in my life, whether they're recently or in the past, where I just sometimes I get so caught up in the moment and the and the drudgery of the moment, whether it's a uh, it's a big tax bill or whether it's a big failure that happened mm-hmm. along the way or whether it's a yep. failed relationship. And sometimes I get stuck there yep. so help help me help the nice guy community when you get when you find yourself in that situation how do you mm. find the mental strength to pull yourself up out of it uh and move on I, I know time is oftentimes just what happens but how do you actually put your your head mentally in the right spot i think comparing to yourself n- never compare yourself to others but compare to what you've done you know from the day you were born from your earliest memory to your, your your first lemonade stand to your first car washing business whatever it is always think what was the biggest issue that i faced at that point and didn't it seem like a you know, like unsurmountable mountain of problem mm-hmm. and then once you pass it it goes like you know what this wasn't actually that bad <laughs> yeah, that's every, true. Every, that's true. Every, every time you do that once you hit that mountain you look at it and go like how did i look at this stuff in the past and you know what it wasn't actually that bad to get over it and get onto the other side of it so everything is is uh, perspective i think that's key to anything because you can get up into the, the, the daily sort of, uh, you know, trying to chase that money and make sure that you get your bills paid on time and make sure that whatever it is, but put it in perspective for yourself. No, I agree with that. I agree with that. I was reading one of your uh, your blog posts. By the way, you're, a, uh, you're, a, you're an excellent writer and I, I enjoy reading your blog. I've read so many blogs over the last two years since we started this podcast and I yeah. really get, you know, and oftentimes the ones that I really like, the ones that really attract me, like the ones that you have written, I, I always feel like you don't write enough. <laughs> it's like, I think you st- <laughs> you wrote for a while and then you stopped for I years did. and then you came back and then you've just recently written four or five blog posts, I think. And, I did, yeah. And I keep thinking, man, I wish there was a little bit more of recent Bob, <laughs> you know? Okay, okay. Um, I'll take that as a hint. I'll start writing. <laughs> um, why do you think, and one of the one of the blogs that you wrote about is talking about your best investment being you. Um, yes. And I, I think it's probably an easy answer because I think mm-hmm. that you rely upon your yourself pretty heavily. But why is it that you think that for other people, the best investment should be them as well? Okay. Um, very simple. The only thing that you can be sure of in this world is yourself. Uh, and that's bar having health issues maybe or whatever it is. But mm-hmm. the only person you can improve, the only person you can teach, the only person who can fail and win at things after is yourself. Um, and everybody has that same motivation. It's uh, the survival of the fittest sort of thing, but it's, yeah. it's more the survival of the most adaptable person. So you need to yeah sort out, once again, find your perspective find that actual starting point that that baseline where you can actually start measuring from and then say everything i do needs to be you know um something that has to do with becoming smarter becoming better at what i'm doing today and there's so much stuff out there you know with the internet you can you can teach or learn anything you like and that's that's the thing a lot of people just seem to forget because they're consistently caught up in the wheel of trying to find the next tactic, you know, the, the next shortcut. How do I become a millionaire, yeah. you know, next month? If I press these two buttons, what happens? And, <laughs> you know, that, that's, not, that's not how it works. Uh, a lot of people don't have that because they probably do realize and understand it, but they're so busy that they don't stand still and think about it. No, I agree with so, that completely. What um, what are the big problems in your world right now that you're that you're going to solve next? Because I, I know that you know, you're a guy that continually works on things. So what's up next in your world? That's a good question. I'm currently um, probably the last three months now. I've been, um, you know, basically sitting at home and at the library. Those are the only two places I've been, um, and I've been doing a lot of reading, uh, figuring out almost, uh, you know, some some bigger problems like why why are we here? What's our reason of of actually existing? And this probably goes a bit further than you know just running a business. Um, I think my biggest problem at the moment is to find out what for the next the second half of my life I'm going to be focusing on and what am I going to be dedicating my time on um, because I've got a young family um, as you know I'm separated but I still have my kids obviously 
Um, I don't have a business at the moment, but I'm thinking about do I want to start a new business? Do I want to start a non-profit organization? Do I want to start a foundation? Those are the things I'm sort of trying to um, yeah, put in place at the moment. So if you're out there in the nice guy community and you're listening to this uh, this interview, uh, Bob may be some venture capital that you might be looking for. <laughs> Just start seek him, <laughs> seek him out on, on Facebook. If you if you can sell him on what your idea is, maybe he'll go for it. You never know. Maybe. You never know. You know, if it if it ends world hunger or, or brings world peace. Definitely give me a call. Yeah, that sounds like a very interesting uh, plan of attack for sure. Uh, five, mm. five quick questions for you. This is our, yes. our speed round here, Bob. So uh, in each of the answers to these questions, if you could spend uh, 20 seconds or less, I'll try my best not to interrupt or, uh, or interject or anything. So uh, are you ready for yep. these five? Here we go. So uh, be relatable. What do you suck at? What do I suck at? I suck at a lot of things. I suck at sports. I suck at small talk. And I suck at socializing. <laughs> the, I, I, the only, I can't uh, I can't tell you about the sports, but the other two, I think you're probably okay. You just might think you suck. <laughs> All right, be uh, be transparent. How do you pay your bills? Um, at the moment, I'm uh, I'm getting uh, uh, obviously I've got my money in the bank from selling my business previously. Uh, I'm doing some consulting gigs here and there uh, for projects that I really like, uh, which I believe in, and uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, be confident. What do you do as an entrepreneur as good as it gets? Know my shit. So that's the main thing. If you know what you're talking about and you're trying to pitch or sell something to somebody, they feel that they know that hey, this guy isn't full of shit. This guy isn't regurgitating. He actually has done the work. He knows how this works, and he can help me forward. Excellent. All right, be humble. What experts do you need to call upon to make shit happen? Um, good question. I like to look at, like I said, I spend a lot of time in, in the library uh, because uh, books are amazing. Books basically have the knowledge of you know, decades uh, in, in sitting in shelves, people that have long gone since, but their ideas still live there. And yeah, I like to tap into that. I also noticed you uh, you uh, you mention a lot. I don't know if you know Ted Rubin personally, but you do mention him a lot in your uh, in your uh, yep. in your posts. So have you guys had yep. a, have you guys had a relationship over the last few years? Uh, we're sort of starting. We're sort of starting dating a little bit. Yeah, he's <laughs> Ted. Good, if you listen, he's a good, call me Ted if you're listening. <laughs> yeah, Ted is a, a, re- a returnal relationship kind of guy. Yes, so he's a definitely he is, a, yeah. a, a good guy. He was a guest on the show probably way in the beginning, about a year and a half ago. And he's I know, a, I know, yeah. I listened to that episode actually. Yeah, um, good guy. No, he's he's fantastic, and uh, yeah, there are some guys out there that I'm sort of reaching. This is my socializing problem, which I just mentioned before. Yeah, um, I used to be of the idea that I knew everything and I didn't need anybody, but now I'm sort of coming out of my shell the last year or so. And yeah, Ted's one of the guys I, I'm sort of really trying to uh, bond with, so to speak, because I really believe in what he does. Yeah, and nice guy community. If you don't know Ted Rubin, just go to my website dougsandler.com and in the little search box, type in Ted Rubin, and you'll uh, get to his episode. Episode and you can see on his Twitter uh, page, yep. uh, it, it just it, Bob is not a, a believer in a big Twitter following. I don't think Ted is either. However, Ted has I don't know some several hundred thousand Twitter followers. It is amazing how many people, and he's yeah. engaged too. He's totally engaged. All right, he is, uh, he last is. one. Be realistic. Where are you going to be in ninety days? Uh, probably still here. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. One. That's good. All right. Yeah. So, I don't have any, no no big plans in that in that regard at the moment just yet. So, how far in the future can you see? Uh, probably till tomorrow morning, okay. <laughs> if I'm lucky. Yeah, yeah I, I I take it day by day. Uh, there's too many variables, and I do believe that obviously investing in yourself will take you so far. But uh, you're dependent depending on what sort of work, what sort of uh, team of people you have around you. Uh, and you know, if Donald Trump gets elected or not, that's a, that's a big one, I think. <laughs> where, where, where do you live? Where do you live? Uh, I live in Perth, Australia, but so, I'm Dutch. In case you're figuring out where the accent was yeah, from, yeah, I was trying to figure out where the accent was from, but I, I, I thought I, I thought you were living in Australia now. And how much, how much does um, does the election in the United States affect you guys over there? Um, we do get it a bit on the news, but uh, you know, obviously with the internet, everybody just finds their stuff there, and it's more like a it's more like a comedy show. It's oh, it's uh, six o'clock with Donald Trump. Hey, hey, yeah, it is. Know. It is kind of so, it's kind of crazy, yeah. empathetic all at the same time. Uh, yeah, if, if, yeah. <laughs> if you have if you have time for just two more personal questions, and then we will uh, conclude the interview. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Do you have a an iPhone, or do you have something inferior? Um, I just went from an iPhone 6S Plus to an iPhone SE because I wanted something smaller. So oh, it's an inferior iPhone. Okay. <laughs> That's right. It's a smaller, not yet, not more inferior, just a smaller iPhone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know. I think you're talking on your phone, but can you go to the picture app at the same time and tell me what the last photo you took is? Ooh, that's tricky. 
Let me see. Photos. This is probably not going to be very exciting. This is, uh, I just got a new modem for my new internet provider, and it's got my SSID password on it. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty exciting, though. Uh, and go to, your, go to your texting app and tell me the, uh, the last text message sent and received. Okay. My last one sent was, okay, I'll come and pick you up right now. And the one I received was, good daddy. <laughs> that was my six. That was my six year old. Your my six year old text. Friend. That's pretty good. <laughs> I know a lot Excellent. of a lot of emojis. A lot of emojis. Hey, well, I, I really appreciate you taking time. I know it is uh, first thing in the morning, and you probably got to get your kid off to school or preschool or wherever she's going. So, uh, thank uh, you. She's got a holiday. She's on holidays. But thanks for having me. It's amazing. Hey, um, my, my pleasure. We'll uh, we'll make sure we make the uh, the links available for you the day that uh, that it comes out. So, uh, nice yeah. community. Never underestimate the power of nice. Special thanks to our uh, our guest Bob Jones for being on the show today. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for having me, Doug. I appreciate it. And I'm going to listen to myself on your, uh, on your podcast when yeah, it comes out. Yeah, it's going to be great. I was, <laughs> I was so excited when you said you'd come on the show because I've been following your antics. If for nothing more than just comedic relief every once in a while from all the crap that's been going on on, <laughs> you know, on social media, you're, you're the guy that tells it like it is and you're a, you're a breath of fresh, fresh air. So thanks, for, Bob, for, uh, for thanks. what you do. Thanks for that, Doug. Cheers. Steve O'Brien. No, cheers to you too, Bob. Steve O'Brien, go ahead and take us out of here. The nice guys want to hear from you. Call 4242-DJ-DUG and ask any questions you like. Well, except about the cloud. Nobody understands the cloud. Uh, Don't bring up Santa Claus either. Doug's still a believer.